are you? It's uh, Xavier, and we're down the bottom of the garden, and we're with my Katsura Maple. Now, most of you should remember that around about the beginning of June, I took a load of advice about what exactly I should do with this. And it was Yelly of Growing Bonsai who came up with a solution of actually doing two air layers. So, hopefully, if this has worked, we're going to have a cascade, and also a twin trunk, and potentially a later a raft. But should we have a look and see if there's any roots there first? Okay, probably the best way of uh, trying to decide this is uh, opening up the foil. And let's have a look and see what's under the tin. Okay, now I think I said in an earlier video that I had actually had a little peek. And um, I definitely spied roots in here. So let's have a look, take that off and I can see a lot of roots already. Yeah, it's all sort of white roots there. So we're happy with that one. We can go ahead with that. Then lower down. And definitely there's roots all over this. From that, I think we can clearly see I'm going to be separating the tree. But uh, Yeti, thank you. Looks like I'm going to definitely have two trees, if not potentially a third. But let's not greet greedy. Nice, nice collection of roots in that one. Going down the tree. We've definitely got roots in that bag, even there. We have a little straggler. Right, back up the top here. Here it is. Um, quick spin just to remind you. It, it's had some growth. Um, tips are looking a bit burnt and scraggly. So it hasn't got loads, so it's clearly there's been, uh, well lower down we've got nice water movement clearly, but yeah, we need to separate this and we're going to do that right away. Before we go any further, am I going to repeat the sphagnum moss experiment? No. Let me reassure you that up, up until last year I've always, always put my air layers straight into a, a decent uh, draining soil. Um, and that experiment was only because of the amount of uh, quality roots I saw that uh, that uh, Peter Chan had uh, had been achieving and, and I think it was pretty well clear that um, in my particular circumstances with the setup I had that was never going to be successful so back to what I always try so let's get this separated shall we um, I haven't decided whether I'm going to go in for a, a training pot like that or whether to go for pond baskets if I can get a pond basket then that's probably the way to go, to be honest. All right, first thing I want to do, get the ratchet on there. Oh, poo, I made a big mistake there. It's too late now. But in my eagerness, I've broken my ratchet, what's happened here? Okay, that's, that's gone. <laughs> but in my eagerness, I forgot we had this branch down here which is actually below the air layer and that was going to be part of that tree. Oh well. Looks like we're going to have to redesign. So let's get the wire off. Right and let's just see, I mean you can see there's loads of roots in there. the bag removed and you can see lots of roots so what we're going to do first of all I'm going to wet them this is going to be crucial and I'm not going to overlay with the air layer points we've all seen it and done it but do need to be a little bit careful what I don't want to do is break off too many if I can avoid it going to very very gently just tease out I, I'm not going to get too much out what I want to be able to do is spread these roots out just a little bit I mean I'm absolutely ecstatic with the number I've got um, and 
I suppose that raises the question, doesn't it? You know, when's a good time to separate? And I'm at the earliest stage. I would normally separate in another week's time, but I could see there was so much roots under here that I just thought it was uh, an ideal opportunity. Now, if you haven't got anywhere near that sort of root production, then you, you leave it. Because um, the risks of it failing increase drastically um, the less roots you actually have on the on the bundle. So if you've only got two or three little straggler roots, you might be better off just leaving it a little longer. Okay, well I'm going to continue to carefully tease. There's a big mound here. Um, but I, it's always that balancing act to get as much of the sphagnum off as you can. And you can also rinse without actually breaking these, these roots. I've got a few that are browned off, but the rest are fairly white. So, and what I'll probably do is I'll plant this up and then look at it again in the spring. I think we'll come back when it's cleaned off. Okay, well I've got this, um, this pond basket. Um, just got a little bit of wire on it that I'm going to use to attach. And uh, the mix I'm going to use is actually a, the Kaizen uh, number two mix, which uh, I'm slowly going to start transferring all my better trees or all the future trees into a decent, uh, decent mix, which means it's going to have the zeolite, the lava rock, um, pumice, all that sort of stuff. And, uh, and a lot of that's been uh, pushed forward because you just can't get the kitty litter or anything like that. And I've noticed when I've done some research that a lot of the stuff I've been using, although it's giving you the drainage, it's also having an effect on the pH, which for many trees could be why I have some of the issues with, with growing. So I think it's the first thing I'll say, thanks very much for watching because as a result of the ad revenue, not only can I get little drill bits in that, but it also means I'm gonna slowly be able to afford to buy the more expensive soils. Anyway, let's get this um, sorted. First thing I'll say is, Lots of roots, I'm going to carefully cut the end off. Um, now, as you see, it's going to be a cascade. But I've also, I forgot, I've got this branch on the side here. Um, now, I do want to reduce the foliage mass. Um, and I'm going to take the decision now of removing that. Just leave a stub. So this is what we're looking at now. One pad level there and then the lower ones down here. Now I can start sorting this out a bit better once I see what's happening and I might well reduce some of this foliage although it's already started to die later on. Because um, obviously we've only got a small amount of roots that are going to be supporting that right now. Now initially I'm not going to be putting on its um, on the angle for a cascade because I want to get a nice root spread. In terms of tapping this down we have to be very very careful because we have very very delicate roots and they will break. What I will use is that stub as the securing point. And that keeps that nice and secure. I need to have a little bit of padding under there. And the final thing I'm going to do, just to help, is just keep some sphagnum moss on the surface, just to help keep the moisture in. And I, I would see myself taking that off again in another two or three weeks. And hopefully, that's all right. Now we do need to look at whether we're going to reduce um, reduce this foliage in any way. Remembering which ones I actually want. We've got one, two, three. So we've got everything we need. Um, let's 
going to be down like that. Hard to see it. There's already a lot of dead leaves, so we're going to, to be fair, it looks like we're going to lose a lot of the leaf mass anyway. Um, I'm thinking that's going to be the crown. What I'll say is that had quite a lot of roots on it, so I'm pretty confident that's going to be pretty confident. I'm fairly confident that's going to be fine. To be fair, what you don't want to have is bugs and everything on it. So I am looking out for bugs, anything like that. And I'll just continue. Basically, I'm going to take it all back to junctions of where any, there's any extensions. I'll take it back to the, uh, the closest point back to the first division like here. There's the first division so I'll get rid of that one there and just thin it out that way. So there it is, obviously it's going to be a cascade so it's going to be that way, but you can't see it because my hand's in the way, but we'll see how that grows. Um, good watering, keep it in a shady place. Yeah. Rightio, well that's good. Rightio. We're now going to go and separate this one. So, same thing, and I think this should have just as many roots. Okay, the big reveal. Those little white, white things certainly look like roots to me. Uh, again, it's just nice, look at that nice load around there. Again, very, very carefully, removing this sphagnum. Well, that was a palaver. Um, that great heavy trunk there, but it's separated. Um, I thought it had bridged, and I was trying to work out if these roots had come down from the lower end, but. You can clearly see that there's a lot of roots that have come from the top here all the way around. Um, so I'm very carefully kneading out a little bit, but some of these roots are still breaking. So I've still got this great big chunk here, which I think is going to be a nightmare. I'm going to need a sharper saw at some point or something to get through that. But that'll be enough that I can stabilize it in a box. And we'll just see what grows from here. I mean, obviously I'll take this top off, but that could be quite interesting, I think. I definitely think that could be quite interesting. So, wet this down a bit. And I'm gonna put this into quite a, a, a deeper, deeper box. And then we've got a look at this. Are we likely to get anything out of this base? Probably not. But I will do though. I'll clean it up. And we'll see, you never know. You might actually get something coming from that. Will something come from that? I don't know. Um, I'm not counting on that one, but I'll leave it as it is and we'll see what happens with it. Okay, so we've got it here. Um, there is lots of roots there. Um, I'm not going to try and take any more sphagnum off, I don't think. Tourniquet wire there, so they've come from above it. Um, so that's one area there, there's no roots, but it looks like all around the rest of it, lots of roots. So. They're a bit hard, I don't want to risk breaking them. So I'm just going to literally just try and gently tease the roots in a vague direction that I want them to go.
Now the roots are actually very close to where that, that junction was, so it is probably going to look like a, uh, a nice little clump, to be fair. I think those roots have come up nice and high. And again with this Kaizen number two, well I'll get you to have a look online, the, the details are in my description. Um, I worked it out and it works out to about a pound 25 a litre. So I suppose if you have a look and see how much it costs on eBay, I think you're paying sometimes four pounds about for just a straightforward uh, rubbish mix, if I was honest. So I want to keep that high up there because we have got roots coming from the top there. Okay. So that needs to be watered in nicely. And again, I'll use the uh, sphagnum moss from it. Again, there's a lot of roots on this, so I'm not, you know, I don't doubt that it's going to be able to hold, that it's going to be able to cope with this. But again, all I'm going to do is go around, just clip back, just try and reduce the load just a little bit on this. Still maintaining enough leaves that it can actually um, support itself or support new rope growth. Okay, well, it was a little bit of an adventure, and uh, I think you're probably glad you didn't get to see it all. But there's the final uh, final position. That one's in place. Um, I've cut it back. I can see through it. As I say, there were stacks of roots on there, so I probably don't need to do anything more than that. Um, got it in a um, pond basket. Lots of space, lots of good soil, good free drainage, and it's got at least another two months of root growth before we start getting into the really cold weather. Um, I'm really, really hopeful of how that'll look, and to be fair, I think of the two, I th I'm liking this one better as a sort of low, clumpy, or twin trunk. I'm not sure what's going to happen with this knobble here. Probably going to get removed at a stage when I see how the tree responds. Obviously, we've got a lot of low branches, very, very low to this, and uh, it may, well, I can imagine it's gonna uh, change radically over the coming years. But first of all, what we really wanna do is to really get some vigor and get some roots. So, from Xavier, with a big thank you to Yelly of Growing Bonsai for the advice. Um, I've definitely got my cascade, I've got my twin trunk or clump, all with copious roots. So that proves, yes, of course, you can take multiple air layers off the same tree. And who knows, maybe even that uh, stump, that horrible gnarly root, may actually send shoots out. I'm not sure I've seen maple send shoots out from the base before, um, but then I can't honestly say I've looked for it. Well, we'll wait and see. Um, if there's energy in those roots, it probably will. So, yeah. So thanks very much for taking the time to watch. If you want to see more about this, I the um, decision making, because Yelly did a really good um, collaboration with me, where he went through his sketch and design, and really, really interesting. Have a check out in the description. I've got the two videos that relate to this one. Um, and please, have a look. Um, Yelly's very funny, you know. So anyway, um, pleased with what I've achieved. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, enjoy the weekend because that's where I'm approaching now. Uh, God bless. Cheers.